coincidental with the unveiling of Britain's memorial to Franklin Roosevelt comes the screen presentation of his life. The occasion is unique, for the crowds milling in Leicester Square come to pay tribute not to the usual film stars, but to the wife of a great man, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. Meeting a number of Britain's leading film personalities attending the premiere, Mrs. Roosevelt receives a bouquet from child star Margaret O'Brien, whose part is to recite the late president's famous call to youth of all ages. Twenty youngsters from Tallywane near Pontypool are South Wales' Men of the Week. Their ages range from 14 to 16, and they're the operators in a unique building scheme which brings new houses to the valleys. Working completely on their own, these young taffies are the master builders of tomorrow. Old and insanitary houses still dominate the skyline in Monmouthshire. All too slowly, new dwellings are being built. Here, freshly erected, stands the first product of the boys' labour. A dozen houses are on the verge of completion. Wales's own sons are bringing brightness into a once drab valley. Ducking into a New York store to buy a pair of shoes is a walking skyscraper from Iceland, 8 foot 8 Johan Patterson. The 435 pounder Wonder Man takes a size 25. That's his wife's waist measurement. The salesman doesn't know whether he can help, but the long and the short of it is that Johan walks out with new shoes. Yeah, they're a fine fit. Thanks. Oh! It always looks like snow, even though it's spring outside, in a newly constructed Poznan factory. The snowmakers are 200 girl workers who are engaged in cleaning feathers. Theirs is a job that's more trying than counting the surplus pennies in the treasury's till. Drawn into an air suction pipe, all the feathers are collected to the last floating one. Packed tightly, they're sent off to be made into feather beds and cushions to bring softer nights to those who don't like sleeping on bare boards. Softest job of all is left to the van boy, whose life moves on a permanent feather bed. 200 girls from the All-American Feminine Baseball League swing into a joint spring training spree at Florida's Opa Locker. After a six-month layoff, during which they left their bats on the mantelpiece, they're ready to work out winter's kinks. Last year, these lady stars drew a million fans, which is a few thousand more than even Dennis Compton can command. If the MCC can follow their action and their form, Don Bradman and his Australians are in for a hot time. It looks like a bumper year for the most glamorous of all baseball nines, the Feminines. 